this video, I'm going to show you how to run a Monte Carlo simulation on inventory management. The example I'm going to go through is the following. A uh, hardware store sells an electric drill. Daily demand for this drill is relatively low, but subject to some variability. Over the past 300 days, the following demand frequency has been observed, shown below, and there's the probabilities associated with it. Um, when an order is placed to replenish the inventory of drills, the time between when the order is placed and when it is received, i.e. the lead time, is a probabilistic value. Based on the past 100 orders, it has been found that the lead time follows a discrete, uniform distribution between 1 and 3 days. There are currently 7 electric drills in stock, and there are no orders due. Uh, and we're going to identify a Q and an R. So a Q is our order quantity, R is our reorder point that will help us reduce the total monthly costs. The total costs include uh, fixed order cost, holding cost, and stock code cost. Uh, we're going to estimate that the fixed cost of placing an order uh, with the supplier is $20. Cost of holding a drill in stock is $0.02 cents per drill. And the demand, if it's not satisfied each time uh, that we stock out, uh, the customer is going to go elsewhere and we're going to lose a sale. And so that average estimated cost of stock out is going to be $8 uh, per drill. Okay. Sorry, stock out. Uh, assume the shop operates 25 days each month on average. Uh, note that there are two decision variables, the order quantity and the reorder point, and two probabilistic components, the demand and the lead time, in this inventory problem. And we're going to use simulation to try to figure out the best combinations of Q and R. Uh, let's try 10 and 5, and then we'll try a Q at 8, 10, 12, and 14, and R is the reorder, point, reorder points at 5 and um, 8. And then we're going to ask which combination is optimal in the above. Okay, so I have a template here uh, that we're going to fill in to simulate the problem that I just described uh, with the drills at the hardware store. Um, and I'm going to start uh, just looking over here on the right. Some of the things I've already filled in. Uh, our demand for our drills varies between 0 and 5 with the following probabilities. Uh, to simulate that, what we're going to need to do uh, is create cumulative probabilities here. make our lower limits and our upper limits. Okay. Now, oops, sorry, our lower limits, we should just copy down, just like that. Uh, and now, forgive me, I have my uh, calculation option set to manual. Let's set that back to automatic. I'm going to copy these as my upper limits.
demand. We're told it follows a general uh, discrete distribution with the following probabilities. The way to mimic that is using a lookup call and uh, we're going to generate a random number between 0 and 1. We're going to look for it in our cumulative distributions here and then uh, don't forget to log those because we're going to scroll down.
the first cell for and leave the next one variable so that you can scroll down. You're always going to start at the top of the list and look down up to including the date before the time step you're in. And we're going to look for two. We're going to say ask how many shipments are due on day two. And we must use a count if instead of a count, or sorry, instead of an if because there could be more than one shipment arriving on the same day. And what we're going to go do is times it by our order con quantity um, to allow that many units to arrive per shipment. So we could have even up to three shipments arriving on one day. That could possibly be 30 units received that come in that day. Copy that the whole way down. Available inventory is still going to be the same as before. It's just going to be our beginning inventory plus our units received. Demand, same thing. Uh, it's just going to follow this demand distribution every day. Demand fill, same thing as well. It's still going to be the minimum of our available and our actual demand. Ending inventory, still going to be the same as well. Difference between our available and our demand filled. Stock out, same thing. Uh, difference between our demand and our demand filled. Now this uh, value a little bit different. Again, we're going to tie to account for any orders that are going to be due in. We're going to take our ending inventory plus the orders due in from the last set. We are going to subtract um, the demand filled that day, which will deplete our stock. What we're going to add to it is uh, place order times by the order quantity. What that is going to do, if we placed an order the previous day, we're going to add that to our kind of theoretical stock the next day. It might not yet be in, but we want to account for it because we don't want to place too many orders that we actually don't need. Uh, let's say we order um, place three orders while we're waiting for a shipment to arrive, then we're going to end up possibly with 30 or 40 units the next day. We don't need all those units, we just need to be patient. Uh, placing a whole bunch of orders is not going to speed up the current order that we're waiting for, if that makes sense. Um, Okay, so this ending inventory plus order will account for all of the units due in as well as the ones you have on your shelf already or in your stock. I'm just going to copy that down. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, and now place order, we're going to copy the whole way down also. Uh, and lead time, copy the whole way down. And arrive on day, we can also copy the whole way down. Take a quick flip through and see if your numbers make sense. Make sure you're placing orders from time to time. Uh, make sure your stock isn't always stocking out. Uh, okay. And now let's start doing our cost analysis. So now, holding costs are going to be our ending inventory each day times our two cents per item. Walk that two cents. We want that to be true the whole way through. Stock out cost is going to be our stock out times our cost of stocking out, $8. Lock that also. Sorry. Order cost is going to be if we place an order, so yes, it'll be one times the $20. If we don't place an order, um, it'll just be zero times $20, which is just zero. Making its variable zero or one for true or false really helps in all our calculations later in if statements, we don't need them. We're just going to sum up these three costs. So this will be our total daily cost, and then let's copy that the whole way down. And notice we're not going to have order costs every day. We don't place orders every day. Uh, and now let's sum up the total costs uh, per category for the month. Okay, the last thing we're going to want to do is run this simulation a whole bunch of times. We're actually near the last thing we want to do. Um, how we're going to do that, in this case I'm going to run this simulation 200 times. Uh, I would actually buy somewhere between 1,000 and 10,000 runs. You're going to run and run it until you um, notice that your average costs um, stop changing too much. Uh, you have a large enough sample when your sample average approaches your population average and if it does then your sample averages won't be that different from run to run or sorry from um, sample to sample for each sample contains your number of runs. Um, now holding costs, um, stock of costs and uh, order costs and total costs what we want to do is we want to sell reference them from the bottom of this sheet here. I just need to do this once because I've organized them the same as they are here, so I just copy this across now to do this data table. 
total cost and the total cost. And what's nice about that is that uh, if you have a large enough number of runs, these averages will approach your true average value for each um, on a given month here. Given that you've picked your order point at your order point at five, your order point at eight, ten, etc., etc. Very last thing we can do. What's interesting is to run a simulation, uh, or sorry, a what if analysis here, uh, changing your Q and your R. So we're going to do uh, again. I went through the data tab. I went to what if, and I went to scenario manager. Now let's just look at a couple of these scenarios. So what I want to do is I want to play with the reorder points and the um, the order quantities. And so what I've done is I've actually set up my scenario manager. Let's just pull one of these out and add it again. Um, so Q8R5. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to add it back in. And you do the same for all of them. So I'm going to say Q8R5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide which cells to change. And here I'm going to change the Q and the R. Here and click OK, and you decide what each one is. So I'm going to have the Q at 8 and the R at 5. So T11 at 8, uh, T12 at 5. Click OK. Complete R5. And what you might also want to do uh, to be sure that you've done this correctly, you can also click on um, show afterwards or you can go back and edit and just make double sure there's so many things here q8r5 click ok the uh, top one should be eight and the bottom one should be five okay good just click ok beautiful uh, and now what i do is i click on summary and here uh, what you want it to output i've highlighted uh, these average holding stock out order and total costs and so uh, scenario manager is going to output all of those in a little report with all the variations on the um, quantities and reorder points. I'm just going to pause the video while Excel thinks about that. Okay and here we go. Um, so here's our possible scenarios. It always gives us our current values and then it goes through all the scenarios. Now um, you'll notice quite a bit of variability if you have a small number of runs. Uh, I'm keeping my number of runs small because I also am capturing this video at the same time and I just don't want my cell to crash. Uh, again, I, uh, I would advise making your number of runs larger. Uh, and what I'm looking for is the lowest total cost. It's this one right here, but I'm going to keep scrolling through. Okay, lowest total cost for me is when um, reorder quantity. Um, or sorry, the order quantity is 14, reorder point is at 8, interestingly enough. Um, so that is the best uh, set of Q and R uh, from the scenario manager. So there we go. So that helps me decide, in this case, with this output, what I would do, I would set my Q to 14 and my R to 8. So I would order 14 items at a time, and I would trigger an order if my stock uh, plus the inventory to 